Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give you a little overview of the ICANN Aero wheel set. Now I'm testing these wheels at the moment but I thought I'd give you a little overview just on the build um, but there'll be a much longer review uh, in due course when I've put some a few thousand kilometres on them probably over some horrible roads and some gravel roads but let's have a little look at the construction. So these are pretty wide sort of an all road slash gravel wheel set similar to the Polaris 42 that I'm also testing at the moment. They're quite wide internally, I think they're 21 and a half, and externally they are 29 or more like 30 millimeters. Um, 24 spokes front and rear, so pretty standard for a disc, disc brake uh, carbon wheel set. I've got the center lock versions, obviously, and uh, Shimano Free Hub. Now, looking at the Free Hub, this is a Novatech hub design that's been around for absolutely ages. Um, it's got one of those anti bike guard systems on the free hub. Now, I've never really thought they've been that necessary, to be honest. Um, the way they work is a little bit odd because if you've got one steel spline on there and the rest are soft aluminium, are you actually engaging with that steel spline first or are you engaging with the aluminium splines first? And then when they kind of wear the steel spline, does that start taking up load? Because um, all based on the clocking tolerance of where that steel position uh, is actually on the clock. You don't really know which is taking the load first and if that steel part is bearing the load first then actually it's taking all the torque from the cassette and the other parts may not even be touching and it all comes down to tolerance and this part is actually epoxied on i've seen that on other hubs before um how long that's going to last if it's taking all the load i'm not sure but we'll see if it stands the test of time i've never really thought these anti-bike guard things uh, are necessary a if your free hub body is made out of 7075 which is double the hardness of 6061 and not many people are using that because it's more expensive and harder to anodize but i don't think it's necessary and if you talk your cassette up to 40 newton meters yeah i just don't think these anti-bike guard things are necessary but it's been a feature of the novatech hub for ages and that's how it is looking at the end caps on the rear wheel they are threaded on you've got flats on each side for a spanner to get the end caps off and on the rear wheel they are not knurled on the front hub, moving over to the front hub quickly, the end caps, as you can see here, are just pull-off end caps. Now, they are knurled, and I've said this in other wheel videos, I'm not a massive fan of knurled end caps because if you've got carbon dropouts on your frame, if you're putting the wheels in and out of the bike quite a lot, they do tend to sort of bite the dropouts of the, the soft carbon dropouts, and over time they do damage your dropouts. So I don't think it's necessary um, if you've got proper axle load, clamping load of 12 newton meters or something like that. Just a simple kind of matte or aero braided sandblasted finish and then anodized is, is good enough to provide the grip i don't think we need that kind of mechanical locking because it does tend to damage carbon dropouts a little bit if you if you're never taking your bike wheels on and off very much and you just leave them in the bike the whole time then it's fine but if you're testing wheels like i am or in and out the car the whole time traveling with the bike they're a little bit annoying what's nice about these end caps is they have an actual internal o-ring seal on the axle which is quite nice to see um i'm not exactly what sure brand of bearings these are i've just taken the end cap off here there's a 6803 in there so that's 17 millimeters id and it says japan on it but i'm not sure what make that is if it's a name brand or not um, i would have liked to have seen a little bit more kind of just general assembly grease underneath the end cap for a bit more waterproofing because obviously these are going to be written in the uk and you can tell here that the cutting of the threads for the center lock mount has been done after anodizing now that's a good and bad thing, it means that the threads are going to be clean, they're not going to be affected by the anodizing tolerance, um, so it should be really nice for the, the disc to lock onto, but it's not going to be so strong, not going to be so durable if you're changing disc rotors a lot, I mean, most people won't, but I will be, um, and you know, a bare aluminium thread if it's quite soft is, is likely to gall. But overall build quality is really nice, um, it's worth mentioning the price of these is super low, these are 655 USD, so that's pretty much half of the kind of what I would call the flagship Chinese wheel sets of Fast Sports and Windspace. Um, 655 USD is really, really cheap for, for, the, for the rim that you're getting. And these rims have offset drillings as well. So that helps balance out the spoke tension and lateral stiffness qualities um, for the left and the right, both on the front wheel with a disc brake and on the rear wheel. You can see that the, the bracing angle from the cassette side becomes much wider. So you should get a bit better lateral stiffness and a bit more even spoke tension. Uh, on the rear wheel which has always been a problem with kind of 11 speed ready uh, rear hubs is that normally the the spokes are just damned too straight so you have to put a lot of tension in those and not so much tension in the non-drive side and the non-drive side spokes can then come loose because they're running at lower tensions but with offset drillings on the rim that helps mitigate that really well 
and yeah, I think for the for the price, these wheels. I mean, the only cheap thing on them is the hubs. Um, spokes wise, I actually thought these were going to, were going to be pillar uh, spokes, but no. I'm happy to see Sapim CX Ray, probably my favourite spoke of all time. Um, 24 front and rear Sapim CX Ray. Um, decent looking rim. I mean, I can't attest to the rim quality. I haven't gone inside it, and it's, it's painted as well, so I can't see the finish. But uh, for the price, I mean, it's hard to see how these wheels are going to be beaten. Actually, 655 US dollars. Unfortunately, I don't have a discount code for you, but maybe I can sort something out if they survive the testing. Um, but yeah, build quality wise, the only thing I can say poorly about them is I prefer not to have knurled end caps, but that's a Novatech hub. That's what they've got. And the axles in the hubs are not anodized. They don't appear to be anodized. And um, if you're really hammering your wheels and then you're going to change bearings in them a little bit and maybe you know using them year on year, the softer finish of a non-anodized axle will tend to fret a little bit more and there's a little bit more chance for, for getting damage un under the hard bearing races. But you know that's really um, splitting hairs, I think, for the price. You can't really go wrong. Um, the only thing I'm going to be concerned about is, is the hub quality and the tolerances of the preload and stuff. But we'll check that after they've had a good hammering. So check back in. In a couple of months after I've hammered these wheels throughout the winter. Aesthetically, they're pretty understated. I quite like that. Maybe apart from the Windows 95 Aero 35 font that we can see on them here. I'm not too keen on that. I think they could drop that. Weight-wise, they're coming down at 1332 grams, which is actually quite a lot less than they're stated on the website. So is this a Peak Talk YouTube special set when they've stripped a bit of extra weight out? I don't know. I haven't put rim tape on them yet, so maybe that is what the quoted figure is. And like all the other wheels that I'm testing and have tested, these will be going through the same aero testing protocols that I'm doing all the wheel sets. And don't forget, all that data will be coming on the Patreon. I'm doing all the vlogs for the aero diaries on the Patreon, so head over there if you want to check that out. They're not an aero wheel set per se, but they do say aero on them, so why not put them through the test? Now, I expect them to be probably the slowest. That's no surprise, because they're the shallowest wheels that I will have tested on there for the disc brake bike. Um, but maybe they're really good in crosswinds because I'm finding that you know the really really deep wheels actually punish you a little bit more in, in, in really high yaw angles so interesting to see this they may kind of bookend the scale a little bit but we'll find out. One final thing to note after mounting the tyres and it seems to be de rigueur of tubeless ready wheel sets is that it's unnecessarily hard to mount tyres and it's extremely annoying if you're not using them as tubeless and I think most of us aren't using them as tubeless is that we're kind of punished nowadays by all wheel sets meaning that it's so hard to fit a normal tyre. Now you should be able to fit a normal tyre with your thumbs but I found with these it's extremely difficult. Uh, the tyres aren't brand new so they have been stretched out before but yeah I just find it very hard to get the tyres on without tyre levers. Secondly going back to the end caps thing again you can see here on this side of the rear hub the end cap is slightly weird. The axle is very, very long and it's threaded and it comes a long way through the end cap and it doesn't protrude the end cap. It's about 0.5 millimeter shy, but the end cap surface area where it's gonna get clamped into the dropout of the bike is very, very small. If you compare it to the other side where it's much bigger, on this side, it's very, very small. So I hope that's not gonna bite into the dropout. It's putting the same force over a smaller area. So the pressure is gonna go up. Um, you're gonna have maybe four or 500 kilos of clamping force if you do your M12 axle up to 12 newton meters so would not would be nice to see a much bigger um face of that end cap where it goes into the dropout it doesn't need to be this small it'd be nice if they just matched it to the other side 